Hey guys, it's Janice, and welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. You might be wondering, why is there just a black screen? Or in other words, why is she not showing her face? Great questions. And to answer them, for the special and personal video, I have decided to do a voiceover type of video for the first time. Technically the second time, but that's not what's important on my channel to allow my viewers to be really focused during the whole duration of this 10 minute video. Before I get actually started, I want to announce that there will be topics that might be sensitive for some people, especially for my younger audience, and that's totally okay. If you don't feel comfortable watching, please feel free to click off and return whenever you're ready to come back. Also, I truly don't mean to offend or hurt anyone in any shape or form throughout the video. However, if you feel as if it offended slash hurt you, let me know and I sincerely apologize beforehand. This video is by no means intended to cause pain or upset anyone, but to tell my personal experiences and share the video's central message. There will be some jokes here and there, and I hope you don't take it too seriously. I incorporated them to lighten this heavy video and don't mean any harm. So without further ado, let's get started. In this video, I'll be talking about a really important statement that I previously talked about in my latest YouTube Shorts video, and that is, it's okay to not be okay. You might ask, isn't that the title of that Korean drama? Yes. Spoiler alert! The 2020 Netflix one with the hot and cold caregiver and the gorgeous and colorful children's book writer. That's also apparently a comedy series, according to Google. I'm sorry, Google, but you got like 65-ish percent correct. In all seriousness, it's okay to not be emotionally, mentally, physically, and socially okay. How do I know? I may not be a licensed psychologist and or psychiatrist, doctor, teacher, mother, or any particular person that knows you on a personal level, but I've been through some tough times where I would frequently bawl my eyes out for hours, day or night, and question my own existence. Whether it's family, friends, health, school, or any other personal situation I've been through, life was extremely difficult to get through, and it felt like the days were being repeated non-stop. There were even a few instances that I didn't even want to live because of my depression, anxiety, and a lot of other elements that aren't related to chemistry. All jokes aside, I really thought that swallowing 15 pills, thinking of drowning and cutting, was ultimately the better choice than continuing my life because it got to that point. And if you know, you know. If you're at a position like this or even thinking of suicide, please contact the hotline number or visit their website, which I have written on the screen for you guys. Another prevention method is to reach out to any other resource that are around you, whether that be a family member, close friend, or a licensed healthcare provider family members, friends, and fellow humans. If you see your loved one, neighbor, or the person next to you, ask that person, are you all right? Or do you need some help? They might not look like it, or they might not answer you at all, but with even the one or two questions, it can make their day better or potentially even save their life. It might take some trial and error, but reaching out to them can change their perspective on life. If that doesn't help, please get them to a professional pronto. Of course, it's the individual's choice, but helping out others, staying in really close contact with them, hanging out with them, and having sympathy and empathy can make a difference. For those of you who are in that deep, deep black ocean, afraid to live, and would rather end your life, please don't hesitate for help because it's never too late to stop yourself from being on the edge of dying. Your life is important, and please don't let it go down to waste. No matter what people say, it's the truth, not an opinion. It's extremely hard, I know, because I've had those thoughts and attempts. It's definitely not easy to get over it that quick. But let this be another message that you're a person of value and much more than that. And don't just live for the sake of others. Do it mainly for you and your dreams. Even if you don't have any right this very moment, you'll find it eventually. Trust me. If I made it this far with mine, so can you. You might think or say, how can you get over depression, anxiety, stress, and those times so quickly? I still get depressed, anxious, stressed, and just a pinch of those thoughts, believe me, but it's to no extent to where I would try to hurt myself physically because I'm trying my ultimate best to have a healthier mindset and not do anything that goes back to those difficult and terrible moments. It's indeed a long journey that I'm still traveling by foot. The pain when you're committing suicide or contemplating about dying is seriously the worst pain that you can feel to the point where you can't even think about anything else at the specific time. But trust me, it will all be well worth it 
in the end. If you trust me and continue your life, please, 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 I beg you to not do it. It's seriously not worth even the struggles you've dealt with or are currently dealing with. I pinky promise you. Well, personally, I didn't think I would deal with depression when I entered high school, but when I encountered it, I was just in my own lonely, deep hole where I would constantly try to figure out what the driving force was. High school was definitely the hardest four years of my life, for now at least. I don't know why, but I thought I would have a better experience, probably from hearing other people's high school journeys. Those four years, I had fun here and there, but there were lots of memories I'd hoped to erase. I was wearing a mask that I didn't even know about until my junior year. I don't want to get into too much detail about my high school timeline, but I would give it a one-star rating. Apart from high school, I think I've always been the type of person to be confused, sentimental, and try to be the type of person I didn't really want to be. I think it's because I had a lot of trust issues with myself and other people. I was scared of losing the ones who were by my side at one point in my life. With all those people, I felt entrapped in this dark black space. And when the people I thought I could trust left me when I needed them the most, I felt insecure about myself and it left me thinking, why? And a bunch of other questions that led me to existential crisis. But more than that, I felt like I lost my identity. I didn't feel like myself at times because I would live a routine that consisted of sleeping, eating, watching YouTube, playing games, singing, listening to music, and the cycle on an infinite loop. Yes, I've had many fights with my inner and outer self and the people around me because of my lazy habits and weird personality, but I sometimes couldn't help it, although I could have just changed myself. And yes, I'm still learning and it's quite a long but useful process, which I hope to share to you guys in the near future. But my habits weren't the only factors causing a change. It was the relationships I had with myself, school, religion, and those around me. It's sad, but there needs to be an end or pause in a relationship. There's been instances for me, and I'm sure you guys have been there, done that. There's a reason for the halt or termination, and it's going to take time to heal and cope with their emotions. It might have been a misinterpretation or just a red flag, but all in all, it's better to have a couple of reliable and true friends than 20 fake friends. That being said, it's better to have a few trustworthy relationships than a hundred of untrustworthy ones. Moving on, no matter who you are, there's a reason for your existence. Although you may or may not think that at times, you were made to live your own life that no one else can. Live life how you want to, but don't make decisions that you'll end up regretting. One more thing on that thought, don't make the same mistakes no matter how small or how big because they'll, without a doubt, put you in a place where you don't want to be in, make you miserable, and you'll regret doing them in, in the first place. Just trust me on this one. I may or may not know you, but we're all humans, at least as humans are. And no matter what age, color, economic status, ethnicity, gender, nationality, or any other category, I respect that. And hope that us humans can learn from each other and make the universe a better place, not just for us, the animals, the nature, the future, but as a gesture to give back to those who've given us the opportunity to set foot on this wonderful world. We're all going through different stages in life. We all experience different emotions emotions and memories. Never forget that life isn't a game to play around with. It's reality, so you shouldn't expect something to happen because sometimes unexpected beats you to it. I guess you can expect some things, but don't be mad at me for telling you so. Now, don't let that bother you too much. Let that be a reminder that anything can happen anywhere and any time. We have moments we wish to go back and cherish more, yet have our I never want to face again moments. Whether that's the case or not for you, just remember that although life can be a huge roller coaster, it's worth a slightly free ride. Like psychologist Dr. Jamie Zuckerman said, allowing yourself not to feel okay involves accepting all feelings, thoughts, or sensations and sitting with them until they pass. If you try to avoid, suppress, or ignore them, they will only grow stronger and leave you overwhelmed and believing that you cannot cope. I went on a slight tension, balanced walls, back and forth, lacked vocabulary. I have vocab bank of a middle schooler. <laughs> but now, let me ask you a question. Do you sometimes ask yourself, is it okay to not be okay? My definitive answer is yes. Stay healthy and safe wherever you are. Give respect and thanks to everyone around you. I want you to know that you deserve a pat on your back for surviving another year and a big late cheers to a new year. Let's hop, hop, hop into a lot of emotions, fun, greatness, memories, and respect in 2023.
What I share with you is all 100% real, and I hope you take something from it. If you have any questions, concerns, or anything in general, please feel free to contact me through DM, email, or leave it in the comments down below. I'll be glad to reply as soon as possible. So this is the end of my documentary merge speech like video. If you guys like this video, please like, subscribe, turn your post notifications, and comment down below what video recommendations you guys have for this channel. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys so, so much, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! 사랑해요. 안녕!